fellow HubSpotters. This is Emma with Kiwi Creative. And in this video, I'm going to talk about marketing contacts versus non-marketing contacts. I will define each, uh, show you a couple ways that you can assign um, and remove marketing contact status, talk about the limitations of removing said status, um, and what happens if you don't keep your eye on this and stay on track. Some older accounts um, have been grandfathered in and just pay per tier for overall context. There's no delineation. But if you have a two-year, one-year-old uh, portal that has Marketing Hub on Starter Pro or Enterprise, this applies to you. Now, both marketing and non-marketing contacts in your CRM are regular old contacts. Um, capture data about them, uh, attach tasks, associate them with a company create a deal, file tickets for them. But the difference is a marketing contact is one that you are paying to send one to many marketing blasts and to include in a list audiences in the ads tool. So those are the two things you get paying that, okay? You cannot send marketing blasts to non-marketing contacts. You can still send them one-to-one -one sales emails though. And remember, they're regular old CRM contacts, so you can do all those other activities. So. In essence, your CRM can consist of non-marketing contacts that your sales or support teams are working with via one-to-one -one emails, tickets, or phone calls, as well as those marketing contacts that your marketing team is sending newsletters or nurturing blasts to. You can assign the marketing status to any contact at any time. That's the good news. Um, it will not override a contact's opt-in preferences. So if you assign the marketing status to a contact that's um, unsubscribed from a particular subscription type or perhaps opted out entirely, being a marketing contact won't change that. So you kind of just wasted a contact status on them, but we'll get to that. Um, making them a marketing contact, again, won't change that. Uh, and there are a couple ways to assign marketing contact status. On a form, so as soon as someone enters your HubSpot portal, via bulk update, let you hand pick, but not very sustainable, and through a workflow. So the first way we're gonna talk about assigning marketing contact status is via a form. Um, this is a great way of as soon as someone enters your ecosystem, you can go ahead and mark them as such. Um, it's not appropriate for every use case, but in this instance, if our test form were gating a piece of content or a contact us form or an event registration, we would know that we're probably going to send a one-to-many marketing email to these folks. So let's just go ahead and make them a marketing contact right at the beginning, right? So instead of focusing on the form tab, we're going to visit the options tab. And you're familiar with this. Thank you message, lifecycle stage. We'll head on down to the bottom. And what we want to look for is set contacts created as marketing contacts. By default, this will be toggled on. So great. Again, if this is not appropriate, you can take it off. No worries, right? So that is one way we can automatically assign that status to folks. Another way is via bulk update. Now, this is great because you can say, oh, yeah, testy McTester. Yeah, totally. He's a marketing contact. You can hand pick. You would select whatever contacts are appropriate. And in this little toolbar that popped up here, I'm going to click more and select set as marketing contacts. So that's very easy. However, you can see the disadvantage would be this is not very sustainable. As your database grows, so will this responsibility. Okay, so that's the second way we can easily say, um, I want to filter by everyone that is in Michigan, or I would like to filter by everyone whose favorite ice cream flavor is chocolate. We're going to make the marketing contact fine. But again, it takes a human being to do this. And as your CRM grows, so does that task. The third way that you can automatically assign marketing contact status is in a workflow. So we mentioned earlier, someone submits a form to register for an event. Guess what? They're going to get a confirmation email. However, we know prior to sending any marketing blast, potentially a newsletter or a nurturing email campaign, I can uh, not, I won't be able to reach the new subscribers with this email if they're not a marketing contact. So if you know that your workflow is externally facing to send a blast email, one of the steps you can add right away, hitting our little plus sign and scroll all the way to the bottom 
If you have integrations, this actually won't be the final step. You'll have your integration step there. But I can say, yeah, I'm going to set my marketing contact status. Yep. And save. So this is a great way. If you don't want to give marketing contact status to everybody that enters your CRM, you can do it per email. Because guess what? If we're sending a mass marketing email to them, we want them to be a marketing contact, right? So those are three ways we can assign that status to members of our CRM. So removing a contact's marketing status is a bit trickier, um, but it's worth figuring out because it can be costly if it gets away from you. So unlike assigning marketing contact status, which you can do rain, shine, day, night, doesn't matter, you can only remove marketing contact status on the first of every month which coincidentally is when HubSpot reviews your use of marketing contacts and adjusts your bill accordingly. Going up, of course, if you use less than the marketing contacts you paid for, too bad, so sad. But if you went over your agreed upon amount, they will add that to your bill. So as you can see here, this particular portal, the client utilizes a Marketing Hub Professional. And you can see that each of these tiers comes with a standard amount. So right off the bat, Starter gets 1,000 marketing contacts, Professional gets 2,000, Enterprise gets 10,000 marketing contacts rolled into this price. Um, you can see here, we can purchase additional marketing contacts. Um, again, different blocks and different price points per tier. So Starter can get an additional 1,000 for 45 bucks. Uh, professional can get another 2,224.72, right? Oh, forgive me, uh, additional... So, um, increments of 5,000 per professional tier and another 10,000 for enterprise tier. So these prices um, and the amount, um, the increments are sold and do vary. So other than a little banner along the top of your account and billing page, you won't get an email or a text or smoke signals that indicate you're about to hit your amount. So this particular portal is utilizing 1,318 of the 2,000 marketing contacts allotted. When this number gets higher up, a banner will appear right along the top that says you've used 75%. That's all fine and good. But again, unless you're in this specific tab, you'll be blindsided. So there's two ways we can manage and take away that marketing contact status from folks that we don't want to pay for it. Um, the manual way and the automatic way. The manual way of identifying marketing contacts that shouldn't be marketing contacts and removing that status is still found here on that same account and billing page. And what you're actually going to do is click manage subscription. So we'll see here, marketing come professional, we're, we see where we're at here. We're going to go ahead and manage our subscription. From here, we'll visit usage and limits. And here is where we can see, okay. 1,318 out of 2,000, right? We've seen how it's grown over time. We can click Manage Marketing Contacts. What this will do is take us step by step and kind of hold our hand and help us identify which contacts we shouldn't be paying for because they're bad contacts. So in this instance, um, bounced contacts, we would want to say, yeah, include them. I don't want to pay for a contact that's bounced. Unsubscribe contacts, we can see this is a fairly new portal, so we don't have any of those. And in this step, we can say, well, I've already created a list with various criteria, or I can filter right here. So for example, we can add additional filters of, we wanna catch the folks we don't wanna pay for. So for example, invalid email. Yeah, if they have an invalid email, I don't want them, right? Um, also something I wanna catch is, um, if their bounce reason um, was unknown user, right? That's another instance of that's not super good, right? Um, I can specify I want these kind of bad contacts captured. And if I continue running through and go to next, it will say, oh, according to your filters, you have 5,000 contacts that are bad and we don't want to pay for. Again, this portal's new, so I don't really have any here that I need to take away the status, but I could click update contacts and that would happen. Now, again, this is manual, right? A human being has to do this on the 15th of every month, the final day of every month. And again, looking long-term and thinking sustainably, this becomes another task um, that potentially you'd want to automate. So that's the manual way to do it, right? Again, perhaps not sustainable. You'll need a human to do it. 
but there is a kind of a workaround to do this automatically. And it requires two steps, a list to capture all those bad contacts, and then a workflow where all those bad contacts get pulled in and unenrolled, right? From your marketing contact status. So you'll notice my bad list, I have a couple different kind of groups of baddies, right? If they've bounced, uh, if their bounce is because they're unknown, if their email address is invalid, I also include a filter here to capture unengaged contacts. HubSpot defines unengaged as the contact that has not opened the last 11 marketing emails. If they're opening one-to-one -one emails, that doesn't count. Marketing emails. So if you send a newsletter per month and they haven't opened one for nearly a year, they're unengaged, right? So we included a filter here to say if emails um, have been delivered in excess of 11 or more, but they've not opened any, they're a bad one, right? Again, you can always give marketing contact status back so we're not digging ourselves a hole. And then finally, our last group, if they've unsubscribed from all email, well, we don't want to pay that, right? The whole point of marketing contact is we're paying to send them emails. If we can't send them emails, why are we paying? So we created our bad list. And again, this is a pretty brand new portal, so they don't have any bad guys yet. And I've created a workflow. The sole trigger is member of bad list. Okay, that's the only folks that are going to get pulled into this workflow. The only step I have to add to this workflow is all the way down here at the bottom. Again, if you have integrations, it won't be the bottom, but keep your eyes peeled. Set marketing contact status all to non-marketing. That's what we're going to do today. And we will save this. So you'll notice set as non-marketing contact in the next update date. So even if I were to turn this on, it will gather those contacts and they'll kind of be in purgatory until the first of the month, right? So even if we have this automatic process in place, it's not immediate. Your marketing contact count will still be a little higher today, but come the first of the next month, you'll notice that decrease. And this will help you being mindful of these things and kind of implementing either a manual or automatic process to remove the marketing contact status when appropriate will save you dollars. Um, and headache. So make sure you have a strategy on how you're going to handle these marketing contacts.